during that time, I read, hiked, worked out, spent time with my kids and found out who Sunny is. Mm -hmm. Not who Sunny is with her husband, not who Sunny is with her children, not who Sunny is with her family or friends, yeah. who is Sunny. And when That's you awesome. dig deep and you get that alone time where you are alone, listening to your inner voice and you're listening to these people who Mel Robbins, 41 years old, mm -hmm. came into herself. I found that um, I loved who I was yeah. because I realized that I am what I need to be as long as I love myself first and I put my mask on first. They always mm -hmm. talk about the airplane. Put your mask Absolutely. on first and you can save everybody. Well, guess yeah. what Sonny did? Yeah. I put my mask on. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Harris. Today, we are lucky to have Miss Sunny Perry, and we are the Sales Wolves. Ow! I told her she could howl, but... I, I pointed instead. Yes, <laughs> the point. <laughs> that works. <laughs> it is episode 90 of the Sales Wolves podcast, and as you can tell, Joseph Caldwell is not with us today. But we do have Sunny Perry, which is way better. So we're going to get right into introducing you to Sunny um, and kind of hearing a little bit about her story and really about what her main focus is right now. Um, Sunny is here at our office, which we love being able to do interviews and podcasts with people when it's actually like live, like yes. in person. Not as cool as uh, virtually. I was just showing Sunny a video of me. I just did a podcast with a guy virtually, and we tried to do a high five like <laughs> on camera. It just doesn't work out well. No. Like you don't have that human interaction that no. you do live. So it's so much, so much better uh, being here in the studio. Uh, but Sunny's here uh, working with uh, our marketing team and, and getting some stuff, some strategies put together as she's rebranding some stuff and really hammering down on all the different things that she's doing. So let's talk about that. So tell everybody, just kind of introduce yourself. Where are you from? Kind of your story to how you got here and then kind of what your main focus is now. Okay. So, yeah. um, Obviously, my name is Sunny Perry. <laughs> um, I am originally from Arizona, like Havasu City, a small town. I'm sure everybody watching this has heard, have yes, heard. Yes. <laughs> I currently live in uh, Colorado right now. I love it out there. Been what there, Colorado? Grand Junction, so the Western Slope. Okay, awesome. So, um, it's beautiful out there. We've been there 14 years. Wow. I have a 14-year-old daughter and a 10-year-old son awesome. and a 17-year husband marriage. <laughs> Awesome. So I would say I probably have four kids instead of two. <laughs> um, and so I started my journey with social media yeah. this time last year, actually in October awesome. 2017. Um, I was going through some stuff in my life and I, I came, I just had an awakening. Hmm. And um, my way to express myself instead of wasting time on social media, I saw it as a platform yeah. to where I could change people's lives and to mm. where I could impact them. Because since I was a little girl, I always wanted to be the light, to impact, yeah. to love, to share. And I saw this as a platform to um, get out there because I had a lot of pain. I had a lot yeah. of confusion at that time. And so um, I used social media to mm. come out. And it's funny, Tyler, because I came out at first with it being about quotes yeah. and fashion. So I was yes. going to talk about quotes and fashion yes. on this page. And that's how it started. <laughs> um, and then it turned into, I just was dreaming at night of what I could do. And um, I was on TV for almost four years in, uh, right before I met my husband and when okay. we were together at the beginning. And then we moved away, so I no longer work there. Yeah. And I just remember interviewing people. Hmm. And going around town and and getting to know the different people from the local grocery lady to the the governor, yeah. you know, they yeah. we, they would all come on my show. Wow. And so with with TV, was that like a, for like a news station or? It was a local news station, a tiny one in Lake Havasu yeah. City. Yeah, um, awesome. I became very close with the owner who was a husband and wife. Yeah. They were like amazing mentors for wow. me and taught me about marketing and put me on air and yeah. changed my life. So what is that? Let's let's go back to that moment when you talk about this awakening. Um, so many people obviously consuming social media. Uh, very little creating on social media. Yeah. 
And so talk about that. You talk about this awakening, like wanting to make an impact. Was it some people that you were following that you saw making an impact? And it was like, oh, well, I think I can do that too. Um, or, or what was like, what sparked that? Because there's so many people out there and they just, you know, they're scrolling, they're checking out stuff and they may follow some people. You, know, you have the typical people that are just following like celebrities and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But then you have the segment of people that are following influencers that are out there putting out these incredible messages and, and making an impact. Yeah. Um, so what was it that you were looking at? On, like, what were you consuming on social media that kind of was the precursor to having that awakening? So that's a good question because I was laying in bed and I was wasting time yeah, and I don't sure. like to waste time because yeah. usually I read books or I just, I listen to YouTube, but I, I caught myself in this repetition yeah. of scrolling and mm. I had some advertisements have come across yeah. about some influencers, uh, Mel Robbins. Yeah, she's, of course, yeah. she, I looked at her and I'm like, whoa, she was 41 mm. years old when her life changed. Yeah. And I'm 37 years old and I, I thought it was too late because yeah. when I was on TV, I was 19, 20, 21, 22. That's and so it, it was like, well, I'm too old. I'm not, I'm not, I can't put myself out there mm-hmm. like that. But then I, I started thinking about it. I'm like, if she can do it, why can't I? Yeah. And so it, it was just one of those things where I like, and I started watching videos where he said, are you wasting your time? Why are you scrolling? You put the same stuff on your page. You're yeah. wasting your time sitting there with mindless things. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to do something with my life. When I graduated from college, my five-year-old daughter watched me walk across that That's stage. Awesome. And I will never forget that feeling of her, me inspiring her. Mm. I've always been that type of wife that has come home with a new idea of a new business. I think I've started six new businesses and (laughs) my husband has always supported me, but he's like, okay. And it's usually the multi-level ones. You know, I've done a trillion of those, but I I felt called to this. And I just, I had that feeling that this was my calling and that those TV days were going to come back and I told my girlfriend about it and she's like, you're coming over because she had all this set up. And she's like, you're going to do your first video. And I'm That's like, awesome. I don't know what to do. And she's like, you're great at fashion. You're great at yeah. quotes. Just get on there and do it. Yeah. So um, when, when I went and did the first video, um, organically within 24 hours, I had over a thousand hits on it. Wow. And my girlfriend was like, That's not normal. And it was just, <laughs> no, it was exciting yeah. to see that just over fashion mm-hmm. and quotes and to hear me. And so I'm like, hey, I can really make a difference. Then I started um, following more people and you and Joseph came on there and that's when I started contacting the both of you and got you on my show and um, just being able to meet the different people. And I'm a people person Mm -hmm. and you can learn something from everybody. So um, just following the right people, inspiring, not scrolling on Facebook and Instagram anymore. I mean, occasionally, you know, you cut yourself and you're Mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm done. Can't do this, get off. That's awesome. And so basically embarked on this journey and you had the show, which, what was the previous show? It was called Living With Passion, Got our it. page. Got yep. it. And so how many months ago was it then when we did that? I'm, I'm, I can remember like it was yesterday because I was in my basement and I remember it was cold. So it was definitely the winter because yeah. I had a beanie on, <laughs> which is like so weird. Like I don't really like wear that style. Like, I don't know. But, uh, Everything changed. And I had a shirt that said Hustle, yeah. which is weird. But I'm trying to think. That was a long, that was probably. October, November, December probably. Yeah. 2017. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a long time ago, Mm -hmm. Um, which was an awesome interview. And I remember thinking to myself that it was just such like um, your style was such of like a normal conversation, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, which is refreshing because a lot of the times when you're doing like an interview, it's very like structured. And that's what I don't like. Anytime I'm doing like any of our podcasts, I don't like it to be, okay, question number four, which has nothing to do with what we've been talking about for the last 15 minutes is this, but it was just more of just like a normal, like organic conversation. Yes. And so as you started having these conversations with people, um, when did the moment, because I'm sure you've got that moment of like getting that message on Facebook Mm -hmm. or that DM from someone that it made an impact Mm -hmm. on. And so this idea was to make an impact. Mm -hmm. What was that first message, that first time you really realized that like, oh crap, like I'm doing it? Well, I, like you said, I received many of those because that's what kept me going, especially during the darkest time where I'm trying to figure everything out. Um, But there was a time when I was interviewing a lady named Taylor. She is so inspirational. She is a beautiful woman inside and out. And we went live on Instagram. 
Well, I received a message from this younger girl, and we were talking about just self-esteem and as a woman, and this younger girl said that we changed her life, that wow. she needed to hear what we were talking about that night. Mm. And so it was from that moment that I was like, you know, I can't give up. And then um, when I was going through such a hard time in my life and just trying to yeah. figure out the path that I was supposed to be on, mm -hmm. my daughter and I were driving in the car, and I was talking about just stopping the show, because it's a lot of work, and, you know, there's times where you're like, I don't want to go live. And yeah. am I doing this right? And, oh, yeah. you know, is it worth it? And um, my daughter looked at me. My, my daughter goes, Mom, please don't stop. I love what you're doing. That's awesome. And so to hear that, mm -hmm. it inspired me, even if I didn't want to. Because when yeah. you step out like this, you have, um, unfortunately, a lot of... Um, judgmental people, oh, yeah. especially yeah. being a woman mm -hmm. and a mother, you have a lot of moms who um, are at home mm -hmm. and they're housewives and they're lost just yeah. like I was. Yeah. And they're very judgmental. Yeah. And so they don't understand. Correct. Yeah. They don't understand like, oh, well, you, you love the camera. You love being on there. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. you have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> because, oh, yeah. Yeah. And it, so um, being able to inspire other women has been the reason why I continued and my daughter being the main one yeah. and my children. That's so. awesome. And, and you're right, like having those people that just don't understand, like mm -mm. there's this, there's this idea that like, if I don't understand it, that means like there's something wrong with it, yeah. <laughs> which is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But I experienced the exact same thing. It's like none of my friends yeah. understood. And there's this feeling, especially cause you're putting yourself out there. Yeah. It's like, there's this feeling like, as though like, well, it's gotta be like ego or yes. like they're trying to like, they think that they're better than us. Yes. Or they think that they're special. It's like, no, like I, I actually don't think that at all. It's just wanting to put stuff out there to help other people yes. and wanting other people to know that there's regular people out there, like yes. that there's nothing special about me at all. Yes. I'm just a regular person that just happens to be putting it out there yeah. and for everyone to see. And yeah, I think some people can be impacted by it and their lives can change from it, mm -hmm. which is incredible. There's, um, are you familiar with Ryan Mickler? He's from uh, Order of Man. He's Order of Man podcast. Um, that's probably why you may not be familiar with it. Uh, but <laughs> as, I can, as I man, can check him out. As, as a man, I know it. Um, but awesome, awesome podcast. It's been like top 25 a ton of times on iTunes. Oh, wow. uh, but I heard him speak at Meltdown in the Desert um, two years ago. And he talked about the idea that, that there is someone out there that's waiting, that's literally waiting for the message that only you can deliver. So true. And so if you think about, you know, like you talked about quotes. I, mm -hmm. There's a quote, and I can say it, you can say it, Tony Robbins can say it, Gary mm -hmm. Vee can say it, like E.T., like whoever. Yeah. And the way that I say it, and the way you say it, the way Gary Vee says it, are going to reach a different person in a different way. And that literally, he looked at it as though it was this responsibility that there's someone in Kansas right now that's scrolling through on their yeah. phone that's going to stop and they're going to hear something and they're waiting to hear that message from you because yeah. it can only be delivered from you in the way that they're going to receive it and that it'll change their life. And if that's the whole purpose of doing it, then that's it. Like that's, exactly. that's literally it. And once I started, once I heard that and started really focusing on that, it changed my perspective on, yeah. on everything. Uh, and then once you start getting those messages oh. and then you have that validation of mm -hmm. like, Oh wow, these things are happening. Yeah. Um, especially early on, because early on, when you're still putting the content out with those friends and with those people that don't understand, mm -hmm. it's that validation that, like, for you, it, it's like, oh, got it. Like, now, yeah. like, it makes sense. And now I don't care. Because yep. Gary Vee talks all the time about how, like, you have to not care what other people think. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. You're always going to care what other people think. Exactly. The big thing is not allowing what other people think to affect what you do. Correct. And every validation, every story, every thank you, every um, you said this and I implemented that and this is what happened, mm -hmm. it makes it a little bit easier to not have what they're thinking affect what you're doing. Um, so it's, it's such a huge, huge point. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention before I forgot. The funniest moment, um, it was on, the, I think, back when we had the Daily Bread uh, vlog. I, uh, it was really when I first learned about Mel Robbins. And I first learned about Mel Robbins reading about her 
It wasn't video. It wasn't audio. And so in the Daily Bread vlog, there is an, there is an episode somewhere where I said, yeah, this guy, Mel Robbins, has this five second roll and it's incredible. Yeah. And then it wasn't until like <laughs> hours later, I was like, oh my gosh. Oh. Mel Robbins is not a guy. And so we tried to go back and cut it, and I can't remember if we, like, somehow edited it out. I think I think we said something about, like, there's this Mel Robbins, and there's, like, this little gap. Because I just, I didn't know. But, yeah, she's absolutely incredible. She is. Um, that five-second rule, like, I've I've utilized that so much in my life. Me too. Um, in those moments, like you said, when you don't feel like getting on Instagram Live, yes. but you know you should, and that five yep. seconds to just do it. Like literally just do it, even when you don't feel like it. It's, it's absolutely incredible. So let's fast forward. So you're starting to interview people, you're starting to get positive feedback. So what does it look like moving from here? Like what's like where do you want to take this? Like what's what's your basically what's your vision and what you want this to turn into ultimately? So I have to I have to um, say something that I I haven't done a live since March of 2018. Got it. Got so it. I did disconnect yeah. to reconnect. Yeah. Um, so it's I like reconnect. Slow down to speed up. Oh, you know? yeah. it, it is. There's a resting time in life that we have to have. Life is like seasons. You have to rest and yeah. you have to grind and there has yep. to be that. Um, when I disconnected, I was able to reconnect with my husband and mm -hmm. my children and just everything around me and take a deep breath. Yeah. And my my women, my tribe that yeah. I surround myself with, just really sit down and listen to their intake because they knew who I am. They yeah. know who I am as a woman. Mm -hmm. So it was easy for them to help direct me to the path that I was supposed to be on. Gotcha. So my calling, and like you talked about, I think I feel we all have a calling. Like mm -hmm. you said, people came at you when you came out oh, doing yeah. this. And they're like, oh, where well, you're just, it's all ego. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with you, Tyler? Yeah. You, you just love yourself, don't you? So much. How do you, yeah, how do you think it is being a woman? They look <laughs> at you and they're like, oh, you just love yourself. I'm like, oh, you know what, honey? I look at every <laughs> single wrinkle, every single thing that I have, and I'm- They love yourself, it's, it's a bad thing. It, it is, it's like, but, but every day I have to get up and say, I am yeah. a beautiful woman inside yeah. and out, to, to remind myself, because you have all, all these pictures sure. of what people, you know, want mm. you to be. Yeah. So, but in, in starting my show, I, I learned that my calling is bigger than myself yeah. to help pe people. Since I was in preschool, I used to stand on the stairs hmm. and bring a show and tell every single day. My real name isn't Sunny. My real name is Sonia. Oh. My mom nicknamed me Sunny when I was a little girl because I was never not happy. I was always <laughs> smiling. Awesome. So to know that it was my calling and not to, I mean, to step out, get that many views on my first video for my page to take off the way it did, the yeah. views, the, even though people weren't following per se my page, they were sending me messages yeah. and, but they, you know, they're, I yep. was getting them and I didn't yeah. have to tell the whole world, Hey, guess what? I got 15 messages this week because mm -hmm. that's between me yeah. and those people. Yep. Um, so with that, disconnecting in March changed my life. Awesome. Um, it made me, I started working out. I have not missed a week yeah. since I started in March. That's and awesome. I have an amazing accountability friend. She has inspired me on every level. She got mm. me into, we, we don't call it CrossFit, but yeah. a type of workout has yep. changed my life. And then I have another friend who is um, a business venture, inspiring, beautiful woman who has inspired me. I started my own marketing company awesome. and marketing consulting. So I've launched that and it's taken off. So within that time, I've been able, and I reached out to Joseph and I'm like, hey, I'm gonna rebrand my show. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking I'm gonna come back in July, August, you know, around that time. He's like, well, just hold on. Let me let me think about this. <laughs> so um, Joseph uh, started talking to Ricky, who yeah. is an amazing man who works yep. with you. Yep. Um, and he rebranded me in two minutes. That's awesome. And so my page, the original name was called Living With Passion, which I wanted to live my life with passion and do all these things and travel the world. Well, hopefully in about five years, all of you will see me <laughs> doing that. <laughs> Um, but that wasn't what my show was about because I don't want to be the focus. Yep. My focus are my guests yeah. and I, it's all about them when they come on. So, um, they came up with behind it all with Sunny Perry. And so what I'm going to have is two different um, shows and I have a heart for the military and the first responders. Yeah. My husband was actually in the Marines and fought in the Iraqi war. Wow. I got to live on the Marine base for a while and meet some amazing men mm -hmm. and women. And I wanted to share their stories. So 
what I want to do and what I feel that my calling is, um, that you see people every single day walking yeah. through the grocery store, walking in here, but you don't know their story. Mm -hmm. These people have amazing stories that need to be told. Even your story. Yeah. You're not going to come out in your show and be like, hey, so this is my story, yeah. you know, because you need somebody to help Absolutely. guide you through it, get yeah. it out there. I want to be that conduit. Yeah. So um, the first show will be called um, Behind the Uniform. And right. we are going to interview men and women of uh, military and first responders That's huge. and tell their stories from war to PTSD, how mm -hmm. they're dealing with it, um, and support support groups for yeah. them too. The next show, will we're still working on it, but Behind yeah. the Journey, um, where we tell stories similar to yours. Sure. Uh, Mel Robbins, anybody who yeah. has a story um, that needs to be told. Because like you said, it, I, I want to do something that nobody else is doing. Yep. And as a woman, not really anybody else is doing what I'm doing. Sure. And um, and it doesn't matter if they are. Because like you said, if Sally Joe is doing the exact mm -hmm. same thing I'm doing, it doesn't matter because I'm Sunny Perry and you know yep. some of you may not like me and that's okay. Sure, absolutely. That's okay, but you're gonna come to the show, you're gonna listen and, and hopefully walk away enlightened and, and inspired. Awesome. Whenever you get that guy Mel Robbins on your show, yeah. Like, learning, like, Did you hear that, Mel? <laughs> just, just let me know. No, it's so huge. And I love. I, I want to touch on something that you talked about because okay. it's so, um, it's so perfect with all the things that we're doing within our organization and within my life personally. Is you talked about taking this step back and this slowing down to speed up. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like what you did was really you're focusing on all the other areas of your life that yeah. may have been getting neglected yes. during a period of time. So you talked about um, getting back in shape, like yes. like really focusing on on your health and, and fitness, and then having the accountability with business, mm -hmm. um, with with your accountability uh, person there, and then your relationships. Obviously, mm -hmm. was a huge focus in getting that into a into a much better place, into a strong place, mm -hmm. and in your mind as well. And so that's what we go through with our agents: is this idea of life goals, mm -hmm. uh, splitting your life into four areas: so business, relationships, mind, and body. Um, and we have three goals in each of those areas every 90 days. And so we're always focusing on that. Um, but it's so interesting how, like you've experienced, when you get those other areas of your life in check, oh. how the business side is just a, like, a buy, of course you're going to do better in business. Yep. Like when your relationships are better, when you're mm -hmm. in better health, when, you're, when your mind is, is in the right place. And so many people, the idea of balance doesn't exist. No. We were just talking about how it's more about being in harmony than being in balance. Or the way I look at it is like being able to be aware of the imbalances. Mm -hmm. So if like I'm not spending enough time on my relationships, being able to be aware of that quickly yep. and then adjust. Mm -hmm. But by adjusting, you're going to be in balance somewhere else. Absolutely. And so it's being able to kind of know your limits mm -hmm. within the imbalances. It's kind of like like setting like stop limits on like, okay, once I get to hit that point, like, oh, yep. got to go over there and work on that. And it's kind of constantly keeping this thing afloat. Um, but talk about that now. So like, so you're about to really, with the rebranding, kind of take this thing off, but now coming from a place of being like on lock in all four areas. So mm -hmm. now being able to feel like you can bring your best self, right? Correct. So talk about that a little bit, um, about like what it feels like now to be having experienced going, putting yourself out there with everything not being in a perfect place, and not perfect, but in a great place, mm -hmm. now being in a much better place and putting yourself out there, how much better it feels now? Well, it, it's it's night and day. Yeah. And so just to kind of like, I, I want to backtrack a little bit. Yeah. Um, in that bad place, I mean, everything was kind of like falling apart around me. And it was one of those things that I have always been that type of person. And my husband will even tell you this, even if he hated me tomorrow. <laughs> like, I am always happy. Yeah. Like 90% of the time, I'm the positive one. And my daughter and husband have the same personality. So they're real just laid back. And <laughs> they're like, okay, you can chill it down a little. And like um, one of the interviews that you were just doing, he said, sometimes you walk in the room and people are like, you're just way too much. Yeah. I'm not too much person. Yeah, sure. And so, um, but I've learned that this is who I am. I'm not going to tone it down for anybody. And so in 2017, 18, beginning of 2018, um, I was just in a really bad place. Yeah. I, I had hit a point where I was really confused in my life. Mm -hmm. I didn't know who or what I wanted to be, do, go, see. Yeah. And um, it was a really, really hard time. And I yeah. was unstable and I've never been unstable 
person in my entire life. Mm -hmm. Emotionally, I was a wreck. Wow. But when I got on my show, I felt alive and it was my healing. Yeah. Um, but I did tell you in uh, March, I did stop the show to disconnect, to reconnect. And yep. at that time, um, my extremely close friend, sister, just love her to death. She got me into CrossFit like training yeah. and I was so scared. And so what <laughs> I, I what I want to say about that is I've never worked out really in my life because okay. I have herniated discs, yep. I have spondylosis, like I have a horrible back, I have wow. a torn labrum in my hip. Mm. So everything was I can't, I yeah. can't do this. I'm going to get hurt. And my, I would drive my husband nuts because he's at the <laughs> gym working yeah. out all the time. Yeah. You know, it just wasn't. I just was too scared. Yeah. And so uh, my girlfriend sent me up with the trainer and she's like, you need to go. Cause she knew how much I was a mess sure. emotionally. And so I went for a month and a half and this trainer worked with me and he changed my life yeah. and he got the, I can't oh. out of me. Yeah. And so that became a real healing place for me. Hmm. And so I recommend to anybody out there who's broken in their life. And I recommend working out. Yeah. I truly do. And finding that place that you can release the pain and anger yeah. and frustration and confusion. Like every time I lifted, it was like a release mm -hmm. of all of that, um, that badness. I don't know, yeah. whatever I yeah. had to negativity, let go yeah. negativity. Yeah. And, um, so that was part of that process was the working out was huge. Yeah. Uh, I can't in me was gone. That's awesome. Um, and being a mother um, and being a wife mm -hmm. and just kind of losing yourself. Yeah. You know, and I, and I, yeah. after going through what I went through, I talked to so many women who had gone through what I went through and they're like, well, you just become what your husband wants you to be and what your kids mm -hmm. need you to be. And then you lose yourself sure. and you lose your own dreams. And, you know, my husband's always been supportive of me in every multi-level I came home with it, <laughs> every business idea and every job that I've ever taken. He's yeah. always been there. Yeah. But when I came out with this show and when I came out, um, when I had been pushed by my other best friend who is just an amazing businesswoman and said, you need to start a marketing consulting company. People would love you. And that's mm. always been my specialty. I started and it took off. Mm. My husband supported me because yeah. he knew he's like, this is it. This is your calling. All those other things he would be like, oh gosh, here we go again. <laughs> this time he was like, this is it. That's this awesome. is you. So, um, like you said, having balance. I spend yep. quality time with my kids, which I always have because they are my life. Mm. They are, if it, have you ever been asked, what is your why? Yep, absolutely. They are my why. Mm -hmm. And not saying that my husband isn't, but my children. Because yeah. when my daughter looked at me and said, Mom, you can't quit your show yeah. when I was broken. And when she's texting me when I'm here, you know, yeah. Mom, how is it? Yeah. Like, how is everything? That's awesome. um, they are my why. Yeah. And I want my daughter to work hard and be independent. I don't want her to need a man, but want a man that mm -hmm. she's with. Yeah. And to be the light. And so... It was working out. It was spending the quality time with my children. It was, I don't watch TV as it is. Mm -hmm. I listen to YouTube, yeah. um, motivational. Yeah. Um, I read books and I did waste time on social media, like I said before. <laughs> but um, during that time, I read, hiked, worked out, spent time with my kids and found out who Sunny is. Mm -hmm. Not who Sunny is with her husband. Not who Sunny is with her children. Not who Sunny is with her family or friends yeah. who is sunny. And when That's you awesome. dig deep and you get that alone time where you are alone, listening to your inner voice and you're listening to these people who Mel Robbins, 41 years old, mm -hmm. came into herself. I found that, um, I loved who I was yeah. because I realized that I am what I need to be as long as I love myself first and I put my mask on first. They always mm -hmm. talk about the airplane. Put your mask Absolutely. on first and you can save everybody. Well, guess yeah. what Sonny did? Yeah. I put my mask on and I wasn't ready to relaunch my show and something kept on stopping me and stopping me and stopping me. Now I know why that God said, no, yeah. you're not relaunching right now because those couple months, the last couple months of just talking to Joseph and talking to Ricky and talking to everybody, it was like, life changing because mm -hmm. if I would have launched three months ago, I wasn't ready. Yeah, I am now Yeah, because I started my business three months ago and I got to find out a little bit more of myself and my strengths. Mm -hmm. So I know that was long winded, no, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's exactly right. And, and now it makes me excited to see that next chapter because now coming from knowing who you are yeah. and now you're able to finally show people the real you, yeah. <laughs> like you're exactly. not showing people those different versions of you. And one thing that yeah. you said was so important that I want to make sure people understood or, or heard 
is the accountability and all that. Yes. Like even down to the, the fitness, well, there was a trainer involved. Yes. Because you at that point with the I can't still in your brain wouldn't have gotten yourself to the gym and put yourself through what you went through by yourself. Yep. And some people think, well, oh, well, they had to have a trainer. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. And, and like sometimes you do and in, in all areas of life. But, mm-hmm. but in a fitness, from that standpoint, being able to put that level of accountability in place is what made that transformation happen. Absolutely. Um, and so there's so many people out there that are watching this or listening to this um, that have these areas in their life where they know they need to commit. Yes. And what they really need to commit to is just to commit to some level of accountability in that area. Yes. Because the the opposite of that is, well, how's it working out for you? You know, if you yep. could do it on your own, you would have already done it. Yeah. Right. And so having that just just the accountability of having someone that's there saying it's five o'clock, Sonny was yep. supposed to be here, where's Sonny? And you knowing that crap, they're gonna be there waiting for me, like just to show up. Yes. No less putting you through a more intense workout in that in that context uh, than you would have put yourself. Just the accountability yeah. to show up because someone's supposed to be there, yes. you know, is is so huge. And I think the vast majority of the problems people face stem from a lack of accountability in the Absolutely. particular area. And so if you can look at all the different areas of your life and look at, okay, which areas do I need to focus on? It's almost just how can I apply accountability to that area? Okay, great. How can I apply accountability to this area? I was having a conversation with Joseph a while back, and self-awareness is a huge thing um, for myself and, and with our organization. And it takes, number one, becoming aware of like your strengths and weaknesses, but then it takes identifying within those weaknesses layers of accountability that you can put in place. Yes. A lot of it's just taking the things that you're not good at and deciding how you can eliminate those things from your life to where you don't have to do those, but there's something you still just have to do. But I was talking to Joseph about like, hey, like I've realized that in this area, like I'm just, I'm horrible with the organization on this area of our business. And so I either need to figure out a way for someone to like hold me accountable to that on a daily basis and make it to where it's like a competition because I'm a competitive person. So if you add competition to it, then I'll, you know, figure it out. Um, I was like, so I need you to like push me and compete with me in this level, in this area that I just don't like and I'm not good at. But if I know that you and I can compete on it, yeah. then just adding that level of accountability into it will make me at least get it done. Yes. Um, so I think accountability is so huge in all those four areas of your life. Like even with like your mind, like we talk about like meditating, like oh. like right now, like I'm on a nine day streak on Headspace and it's like the best thing ever. Cause nice. I'm like nine day streak. It's like my biggest streak yet. Yeah. And tonight when I do it, because I've been doing it at night instead of morning, which has been a game changer for me, um, just because I just didn't like doing it in the morning. I was forcing myself to, and I was like, I just don't like it. And I was like, oh, well, why don't I just do it at a different time? So now I've been doing it at night. But like tonight, I'm like, oh, I don't want to break the streak. Yeah. And it's just like, yep. it's not, and some people would look at that and they'd be like, well, that's that's silly. I'm like, well, I, I'll do it tonight. Yeah. <laughs> if, if that's what it took, then what does it matter? Exactly. So I think it's so, so important. So I'm so excited um, to see this next chapter of your life as you put yourself back out there, mm-hmm. but now know who you are, yeah. now have these la- layers of accountability in your life and to be... Um, at a place where you're firing on all cylinders because you're you're working out of your congruence, which you know, you know that this is what you're supposed to be doing, yes. and now you've got the other areas of your life that are in place to where now you can know you can do it to your best of your ability. Well, it feels uh, amazing awesome. to be able to come out on that level. When you yeah. talk about accountability, I couldn't have done it without my best friend who's yeah. my gym or my best friend who's my business partner, but then I have a whole other tribe, you know, with friendships of yeah. real, you could be raw, deep, and yeah. you know, tell them everything. And the other thing I can say is that coming back out, my my husband had told me after I had disconnected and I really connected with Sonny, mm-hmm. um, I realized that I became who I was when he first met me. Mm. And when he first met me, I was this independent, not scared. I didn't care what anybody thought about me because <laughs> yeah. I was on TV. I mean, people come up to you and yeah. they think they know you and either they hate you or they love you. <laughs> yeah. And so when he met me, that was the Sonny that he knew. And then I turned into the Sonny who was just a different person. I, gotcha. I just lost. But make a long story short, coming back out, he's like, he looked at me and he's like, you're, you're the wife, yeah. the person that I first met. Awesome. And so seeing that from him, he's yeah. my accountability. Um, yeah. My girlfriends are, you know, and it's just, 
My, it's it is it's huge. So tell everyone when they see this podcast. I know a lot of this stuff is still a work in progress as far as rebranding and relaunching everything. But where can they go to find you now if they want to be able to find you online? Okay. So right now we still have my old page up, which is Living with Passion. Okay. Um, it says Sunny on top or SP Living with Passion. Got it. Um, we are going to completely turn that page and go on there and get all the viewers from there onto yeah. Behind It All with Sunny Perry. We should be launching. In the, I'd say about the middle of November, first week Perfect. middle of November, and um, yeah, I just want to yeah. be the light and do what I'm called to do. Absolutely. Well, awesome. I'm so glad you guys got to uh, meet Sunny, which I can't believe your name is Sonia. <laughs> yes. But Sunny Perry, and she's wearing secret. yellow. For those that you, for those that can't <laughs> yeah. see that are listening, you should probably check this out on YouTube. Uh, but it's so awesome to have you in the studio live and have you with us here at our office, which is awesome. Uh, definitely go check her out and watch this new chapter unfold, but catch up on the stuff that she's already done, uh, and you will be well-versed to see the new uh, the new Sunny Perry, yes. which is absolutely awesome. I'm so excited. Uh, and with that... This is episode 90 of the Sales Lows Podcast. Again, I'm your host, Tyler Harris. We've got Sonny Perry here, and we are the Sales Wolves. Ow! <laughs>